But first, Africa has vast agricultural potential, yet over the past half century, its per capita food production has declined drastically. In fact, it's gone from being a net food exporter to now importing much of its food. The reasons are complex, but they include rapid population growth, political strife, and weak institutions. As part of our ongoing collaboration with The Atlantic, we profile an American farmer and philanthropist who's made it his mission to reverse the trend in Africa. Howard Buffett is a serious farmer. He is a conservationist, intent on finding better, more sustainable ways to grow food. And he is a teacher, sharing what he knows with farmers in Africa, giving them tools to better feed their people. This, this is all going to take nutrients out of the soil. He's also a man with a lot of money to spend on making those things happen. It's been described that one of your goals or your main goal is ending world hunger. I mean, well, you got to have a goal. <laughs> but, you know, we're not going to end world hunger, but, 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 you know, I think every step we can take in that direction is, is something positive. Just, just slam just it. Slam it. Hard. There, you got it. So now, what do you call this machine again? 8225R, John Deere. It's a tractor. Okay. No see. Howard Buffett loves his toys. My mom always told me I didn't have enough Tonka toys when I grew up, so I think I have them now. Mom would be the late Susan Buffett, who died in 2004. And dad, you guessed it, is Warren Buffett, one of the world's richest men. You grew up in Nebraska. What was it like? I mean, what do you remember about being in this family? I think people think it was different because of my dad. And the truth is, you know, when I was growing up, my dad wasn't well known at all. We grew up in a very normal environment, went to public schools, you know, walked down to the bus stop and went to school. At the same time, your dad, because of your dad's success, you were leading a pretty comfortable. Oh, we didn't upbringing. have to worry about anything. And we were always told, you know, that if we wanted to go to college, it would be paid for. And if we wanted to go to medical school, it would be paid for, uh, which is kind of funny because none of the three of us actually finished college. We all started. Uh, but we never quite made it all the way through. I just had a hard time adjusting in college, so I went out and I bought a bulldozer and I started uh, building terraces on farm ground and taking out trees and building basements. And it was something I always wanted to do, so I went out and did it. And what did that lead to next? Well, ultimately it led to the fact that I'm sitting here. I mean, because um, I had some experiences with neighbors who were farmers and who let me get involved in some of the field work and some of the things that they did and I really fell in love with farming. We have a total of 4,500 acres. Buffett's so, Illinois yeah. farms can produce yeah, so more than 8,000 like tons of corn and soybeans in a year. But they're also living laboratories, part of research funded by the Howard G. Buffett Foundation to improve agriculture both here and overseas. So what we have in this field, the first thing I want to point out is all the corn stocks from right. last year. We do no tillage in this field, zero. Why not? Because it helps build soil health. You save fuel because you only make one pass over, you know, this field instead of maybe three so, or four. So, but you just let the stalks rot? Is that yes, basically Yes, exactly. It? So if you pull this up, see the earthworm right here and oh the earthworm gosh. right there? Yeah, right okay, there. So any gardener will tell you this, worms are the best thing you can have. If I take that shovel, I go dig up a shovel worth of, of soil across the road where they've, where they've tilled it year after year, finding these earthworms is pretty unlikely. The Howard G. Buffett Foundation plans to give away an estimated $4 billion over the next 30 years, most of the money coming from shares of Berkshire Hathaway, the company founded by the senior Mr. Buffett. And my dad gave us this great opportunity with the foundation, and it was natural for me to look at smallholder farmers and see, well, how do we improve agriculture and how do we, how do we make it so that farmers feed their families better. Howard Buffett has immersed himself on the African continent as few other philanthropists have. My dad has said go out and, you know, don't try to hit the ball out of the park every time, but don't be scared to swing. And, and swinging means you're going to miss and it means that you're going to fail some of the times. The foundation has invested heavily in the strife-ridden Democratic Republic of Congo. We're building three hydro plants in eastern Congo, and we started the first one in 2012, 2013, in the middle of a very um, 
intense conflict with the M23 and, and, and the Congolese government. And we had the site when we started, it was shelled by RPGs and everything else. The Democratic Republic of the Congo is an area where not many donors are interested in operating. And so he's taking very high risks in going to those areas. Harvard professor Colestus Juma says Buffett's willingness to take those risks has brought him respect across the continent. He's visited all the African countries. He's looked at what happens, what's happening on the ground. He is a farmer himself. Most other foundations wouldn't dare go into a country where there's that level of conflict, where, that, where you could see fighting break out. To me, uh, those are the people who need the most help. I mean, you're, you're looking at the most devastated populations. You're looking at devastated infrastructure, no governance, no rule of law. I mean, if you want to talk about helping the most impoverished populations, you're talking about going to where conflict is. There is no doubt about that. Yet one of Buffett's most ambitious projects is in one of Africa's currently most peaceful nations, Rwanda, where the foundation will spend half a billion dollars, principally to train young Rwandan farmers. You would have uh, young adults graduating with four-year degrees in agricultural processing and in plant science and, and things that today they don't really have access to. And why is that important? Why does it matter? Well, if you want to advance agriculture, I mean, look at what we did in this country. I mean, you know, the university system is what built our agriculture into a powerhouse originally. Historically, African agriculture was considered to be something that uh, peasants did. Therefore, it did not require training. Back in Illinois, we see yet another aspect of the farmer philanthropist, Auxiliary Deputy Sheriff Howard Buffett. For the past four years, he has volunteered for a job County, it's safe to say few other foundation yeah. heads uh, have held. I didn't, I didn't the one thing that I've gotten out of being an Auxiliary Sheriff, de Deputy Sheriff, is seeing a whole underside of this country that I had no idea existed. I mean, the poverty, the domestic abuse, the um, substance abuse, the attitude of people, uh, about a lot of things. I mean, I, I, I've been, I've been, it, it's hard to surprise me, but I've been surprised at some of the things I've experienced and seen as a deputy sheriff. Howard Buffett is probably more prepared than a lot of other uh, younger deputies coming on. Macon County Sheriff Tom Schneider sings his praises. The amount of hours that he has put in with deputies, uh, it is, basically surpasses everybody else. Uh, he goes through training on a daily basis, uh, and he's always educating himself to see how he can perform at a higher level. So here you are, somebody who's seen the world, who's you know seen a lot, and yet this is something that only in the last few years you've been able to witness up close. I've witnessed in a way that a, a civilian, a normal citizen would not be able to witness it. You see it every single day, and, and, and you're making decisions about how to deal with it, which makes it very real. My question is then, how do you decide where's your greater passion? I mean, because you clearly have that great passion to make changes in a place like Rwanda, but you're also, you also clearly have a passion here. Your first obligation is always at home. I mean, you can't ever walk away from the responsibilities that you have at home. Um, but I also think we have a huge responsibility internationally because we are a leader and we need to maintain that leadership. And, 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 and so for me, I, I don't see that you can't separate them. I mean, they're both critical, but you, can't, you, cannot, you, you can never walk away from your responsibilities at home. Does it bother you that you're known to so many people as Warren Buffett's son? Never bothered me ever, never, no. I don't, I don't think about it that way. Um, I feel like I'm doing what I can do. And, 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 and the truth is, I'm able to do so many things because of my dad that I couldn't do otherwise. He's been an amazing father. Howard Buffett is somebody who has brought his own personal experience and integrity to probably one of the world's largest and critical challenges, which is being able to generate food security for a billion people. And I think that takes incredible courage and commitment to be able to do something of that kind. Here within the last week, uh, he was out with an officer that uh, did an arrest, and uh, the, the individual was cold. He offered up his coat to that individual so that they would be warm. 
uh, the individual said, buffet. And he goes, yeah, some people say that. Well, or Buffett, that's like Warren Buffett. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I've heard of him. And the individual sits back and says, well, you kind of look like him. Yeah, I've heard that. Never once did they even realize that it was Howard Buffett, his son. <laughs> We want to note that BNSF Railway, an underwriter of this broadcast, is owned by Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. That connection had no impact on the reporting of this story.